Hello everyone, we are here with another episode today. So we are going to look at how to build a multi-module application in this video. So as you know, we used to separate out the identical concerns into different different manageable units in order to follow the best practices in software. So there are a couple of advantages that we can gain by using a multi-module application. Let's see what are those. First thing, independent development of a particular module will be done by a particular developer or set of developers. So their scope of modification is defined by a particular module. So the chances of they go and do modification in unrelated code is very unlikely. And the second one is the reusability of the code. So you can later figure out what are the other ways that you can reuse the module. And the third thing is you have the flexibility of selecting what modules you need to integrate in order to fulfill the customer's requirement and finally you will be able to build your application as a single application using a parent uh, project object model so i will be using a apache maven uh, as a building tool for this application let's go and see how the high level architecture looks like so here we have an api module which consumes the data source so the data source can be implemented using a JPA based implementation or you can define it with a set of JSON files. But for this demonstration purpose, I will be using set of JSON files. Here we have the web module. Web module is mainly outputting a web view. So the web view here is primarily implemented with simple set of JSP files, but you can further extend it to TimeLift or any other implementation that you would like. On the API module, API module is further extended to service orchestration layer. So the purpose of the service orchestration layer is basically to reuse the API module services available and to expose them to any other implementation that you wish to implement in future. Like if you are planning to have a single page application and uh, or if you are planning to have a mobile based application, then those services will be able to reuse. Let's check out how the entity relationship works in JSON file structure. So this is a simple entity relationship diagram that I am trying to demonstrate here. So this is related to an uh, electronic store. So you'll be having different different electronic items. So product entity is kind of like a product catalog. So it will be maintaining product price, product name and other information related to product. And order will be maintaining order related information when a particular user placed an order. So order item will be tracking. Uh, what is the quantity of each and every product that you has order and at some point of the life cycle you will be raising an invoice against an order then uh, the invoice information will be maintained within the invoice entity let's check out how the module relationship looks like this is the module interaction related to this uh, implementation so we have the parent form uh, parent form is like a register for all the modules and we have application product module product service likewise and uh, the application module is responsible of starting the application with all the modules as a single application and application is the main web entry point for this application and the other interesting thing is that each and every module is able to start independently uh, as for this implementation and the module relationships and the dependencies are shown right at the right hand side so as you can see uh, the product module will be needing product service and the order module will be needing uh, product service plus the order service board and uh, so this is the module interaction let's go to the machine and see how the real implementation looks like this is a sample application that is developed to demonstrate the design I have described. As you can see, the default 
context route is changed to eStore online and uh, this is the home page map to the default context route and there are three modules that we discussed for product orders and for invoices the product page reads data from the product entity and the result is populated onto this card template and all the requests from product module are mapped to the product root and the order data is populated onto this table and all the requests are mapped to orders root and the same way invoices also map to the invoices root let's check out the coding related to this implementation and i have published this code onto the bitbucket repo and the links are mentioned on the comment section down below before start the code work through let me mention the tech stack that i have used uh, this is a java application developed with spring boot and the application builds with apache maven and jsp CSS and HTML is used to mainly generate the web output and the data source is JSON file store which is extendable to consume JPA based data source later. Let's go to the parent form and as you can see all the modules are listed here and the common dependencies which are shareable among child modules are registered here. And I left the JPA validation and H2 dependencies and if you are willing to consume them you can extend this application later. Let's see the application POM which is the main web entry and you can see all the dependent modules are listed here and the static resources uh, such as JSP, images and CSS files are copied into the application uh, by taking from child modules and I am using the Apache Maven resource plugin here. This is the order module POM file and the dependencies are listed here and you will need to use Tomcat Jasper like JSP processor to support JSP files in Spring Boot else JSP files will be printed as a plain text on the web browser. And finally the product and this uh, invoice POMs are more like identical to the order module and the dependencies are used as per the business function implemented within those modules. Let's see the main class of the application and for the beans needed from the child modules are scanned here with the component scan annotation. This starts the application module along with all the dependencies. And this is the controller to handle default context route and the home page is used as the view here. Let's see the prepare index method. This method is to handle view from each module onto the single root controller and this actually provides a single component for inbound and outbound request for better control of the web request. And the default context root is overwritten here on the application properties to eStore and here online. And let's look at the product service module and the data access object the DAO pattern is used to access data and I have one method to get all the products here and there are two implementation to implement the product DAO interface to read data from JSON file store or to load data from JPA based implementation and wiring of the instances are differentiated from two different qualifiers such as JSON and JP implementation and uh, you can see the qualifier names uh, here one is mentioned as J JSON and the other one mentioned as JPA this is a domain class and it is a plain old Java object and it is convertible to JPA entity if you are extending this application to consume JPA based data source later and we have product service interface and the service implementation and it is uh, looking for JSON qualified DAO for data.
on product press controller a restful web service is exposed to enable extension to the service orchestration layer that i have mentioned during the design discussion earlier and the product application main class is used to start the product service as an independent module and you will not need to start the whole application to do a modification on the product module and please note i have used default singleton scope beans provided by spring for this entire implementation and you can override the scope uh, as you wish let's have a look on the product module and the product web controller and as you can see it gets all the products from the dependent product service which we have seen a while ago and also this can consume the product rest service if the product service is deployed separately uh, instead of actually using it as a dependent library as you can see the model and view is used to manipulate the view and the uh, service result is put as an object and the page need to be loaded is mentioned here and uh, since we have a centralized control on the index page the index page will know which page to load with this data object and the following configuration is left to set the general attributes when running the application in a single module mode uh, with actually with the dev profile and we'll see a demo later in this video on that then we have the module level main class as we have seen on the product service to start this module separately as an independent module this can be used and next let me show how to build and run this application uh, using command line tools i have the code cloned here and let's uh, issue the mvn install command here and we are all good with the installation and i will start the application with all the modules now so we can use mvn spring boot run uh, then we need to specify the application uh, as a module that we wanted to start all good with the application and the application is started let's check out the application on the browser so our application is functioning as usual let's start the product module separately so we can use the same command and we need to specify the module and additionally i need to specify the profile since the uh, beans are looking for the profile specifically and uh, and the profile name i can set to dev here So all good with the logs and let's see the application. Yeah, so as you can see, we get on the product module loaded onto the front end. And here especially remember that you need to define the profile as a dev, else uh, the dev scope beans will not get loaded onto the context and you will end up with having a 404 error. This is all about the demo and the code workthrough related to this. Thank you for watching. I hope you have learned something from this video. Please make sure your post notifications are on. Let's meet again in another interesting video like this. Until then, stay safe.